Welcome to segment three of Citizens Forum being filmed on Tuesday, August the 18th. I'd like to thank again the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every week. Our guest in this segment is Dermot Travis and Dermot's with Integrity BC. We're going to be talking about LNG, liquefied natural gas, but maybe you can start by saying a few words about what Integrity BC is. Sure. Integrity BC was started in 2011. It's uh, funded by a businessman in Vancouver, Mr. Wayne Crooks. Uh, it acts in the original mandate. We were, we were meant to act as a watchdog on the provincial government only, um, but found we were getting more and more complaints and queries about local government activity. And so we spend a bit of our time working on local government issues and keeping an eye on the provincial government. We're different from an environmental organization or a social justice organization in as far as we don't tie ourselves to one issue. We'll go across ministries, we'll go across policies, uh, we'll look at infrastructure projects at the local level, in-camera meetings, whatever uh, the issue may be if it goes to integrity, transparency and ethics in government. Wow, and yeah. uh, do we have much integrity, ethics or transparency in government? Well, sometimes it crops up. <laughs> And, and all three of those things kind of tie into what you want to talk about, which is, which is LNG. Um, this summer, uh, just a month ago, the provincial government signed an agreement with, is it Petronas? <laughs> it's either Petronas or Petronas, and there seems to be a debate about okay. that amongst the media. Yeah. A Malaysian uh, state-owned company. Uh, now, for me, the big problem here is the issue of fracking, which I think is going to poison our province and, and other issues as well. But you want to look right now more at the connection with Malaysia, which is where this company is headquartered. Well, I think one of the concerns that t taxpayers in British Columbia should have about any deal like this, whether it's LNG or whether it's selling power to California, is does the government do due diligence on the people it gets into bed with to do business? And I use the uh, California example because BC Hydro now has to pay $775 million to the California Power Authority for playing with prices uh, during California's energy crisis over a decade ago. Who were they in bed with at the time? BC Hydro? Enron. Enron, yeah. Okay. Now, in 2015, we see that the government, in, in an absolute mad rush to get an LNG deal in place, and the ground broken before the 2017 election, has signed a deal with Petronas. Now, you said state-owned, and, and I think it's kind of cute because all of the media has referred to it as a state-owned corporation. In British Columbia, we would call it a crown corporation. So what happened this summer is that the legislature came back to pass two pieces of legislation so that the government could enter into a deal with Petronas, Petronas, and what happened in that is that the government of today has tied the government of tomorrow's hand for 25 years. And I understand this is kind of unprecedented in Canada. Is that correct? Very much unprecedented. Maybe, in fact, the first time it's ever been done. 25 years from now, Rich Coleman and Christy Clark will not be in the B.C. legislature. I can make that prediction today. Yet, whoever the premier is is going to be stuck with a deal that they negotiated. And they negotiated it with the Crown Corporation of a foreign country. So we have not only the unprecedented deal, but unprecedented tax breaks being given to a Crown Corporation of Malaysia that's responsible for providing 15% of Malaysia's uh, revenue for the government of Malaysia. Now, <clears throat> all of that could at one point be said, okay, we all have disputes over these types of agreements. But one of the things that got missed in all of the coverage about the LNG deal was what's been called by Bloomberg News the scandal that ate Malaysia. And the best way to try to explain it is to put it in very broad strokes. Right now, the Prime Minister of Malaysia is under investigation for siphoning off $700 million U.S. from another crown corporation in Malaysia and mysteriously having the money turn up in his personal bank accounts offshore. 
I'm not really certain that that's kind of the business partner we want to have in British Columbia. In fact, it's definitely not the business partner we should be having. But we now have the extraordinary position that the government's put us in. What happens if, as many people are predicting, the government in Malaysia falls? Well, does anything happen? I well, mean, we have, <coughs> the, we have this deal that we've now signed. We it's have good for Petronas. And I assume the deal will just continue through the 25 years, basically locking us in to very low taxes and very low royalties, I think. And if we want to change anything, we have to pay them. And, and very few jobs for very British Columbians. I'd add, though, um, that there is no guarantee, even with the agreement, even with uh, all of the news releases and photo ops that they've done, that this will ever actually take place. And that's our only hope, as far as I can tell. I, I think the well, government of BC is now committed, but Petronas has five or six years to make their decision. Yeah, and what was interesting about the BC legislature session was immediately after the legislature broke, Mike de Jong got on a plane and flew to Malaysia. Right. Now, the Prime Mike Minister. Mike de Jong being the, the BC finance minister. Who negotiated the deal. And in that week, the Prime Minister of Malaysia had two foreign visitors Finance Minister Mike de Jong and British Prime Minister Cameron. Only one of the individuals confronted Malaysia's Prime Minister on the issues of corruption in Malaysia. And it was not BC's finance minister. It was the Prime Minister of England, Mr. Cameron, who did that. Uh, remarkably, for a government that's so into photo opportunities, there was no photo released by the BC government of Mr. de Jong meeting with the Prime Minister of Malaysia to update him on the progress made in BC. The only photo was released by the Prime Minister of Malaysia himself. So let's let's say the the government of Malaysia falls. Do, will that have any impact on what's going to be happening here with LNG? It, it could have an incredible in impact because a new government could, as we've seen this government do with its crown corporations, decide it doesn't want to proceed with the project. Oh, so that's good. Well, it, it could also mean that they decide to sell their interest into a signed, sealed deal to another energy company. I think right. One of the things that gets forgotten with all of these uh, projects that the government undertakes, such as tree farm licenses, um, P3s, and these LNG agreements, is that they're also creating an asset for the people that they're signing the agreements with. Assets that can be sold, traded um, to other players who may not be party to the agreement today. Now, it, I contacted the provincial government and I asked the question, if two or three, let's say five years down the road, the government of BC decides that because of the poisoning of our water and land through fracking, we want to reduce or shut down the LNG industry. Can we do that without paying Petronas? And they absolutely refused to a even answer that question. I've never seen that from the government. They simply refused to answer the question. So it's almost as if we're locked into poisoning ourselves now in this LNG deal with Petronas. Well, certainly most agreements that are signed with the government, whether it's British Columbia or Canada, are contracts signed with major corporations will include some type of an exit clause uh, that there will be a penalty that will be paid yeah. depending upon when the contract is cancelled. Uh, we saw that when um, as Jean Chrétien was elected Prime Minister and cancelled the rescue helicopter contract that Brian Mulroney had entered into as uh, Prime Minister. And so in the case of Petronas or Pacific Northwest LNG, which is what it's called in BC, uh, who's also a donor to the BC Liberal Party, um, you have to recognize that they will probably have built into the agreement some type of escalating um, cancellation fee, depending upon how far the investment has gone along. Do you think this LNG industry is ever going to happen in this province? If I were a betting man, I wouldn't be betting on it happening in the next 10 to 15 years. Well, to me, that's, that's just good news. And the reason is simply because there's a glut yes. of LNG on the market. There are numerous players 
um, players in North America and in Canada who are further advanced than British Columbia is. I think it's uh, forgotten that there are LNG projects in the planning stages in Atlantic Canada, um, in Oregon, <coughs> excuse me, and in Louisiana, where not only are there projects in the planning stages, there are projects in the ground uh, that have advanced considerably further. All of this is new supply coming on the market. And you see in Australia as well, a major effort to increase supply there. Uh, BC, if it ever does have an LNG industry, may find itself only a bit player in a very large global yeah. activity. I mean, at a time when the, one of the biggest issues in the world is climate change, and another big issue is, is fracking, um, to me, the whole industry seems, why would we want to create an industry that is going to damage us in so many very serious ways, and yet we move ahead? I hope you're right when you say that you think it's not going to happen. No. And, but that's just economics. That's economics. And I, I think one of the interesting things, and British Columbians should be looking at this, is whenever you see information being put out on the LNG industry in BC, it's often tinged by politics. Oh, well, that's what the NDP says. Or, oh, yeah, Christy, she's going to push through LNG no matter what. Go take a look at the business press. Look at Bloomberg's. Look at Financial Times, Financial Post, Globe and Mail report on business, um, the International Energy Association. And you will see from all of the business press, from all of the international agencies, warning signs that we do not need this new supply for at least 20 years. Dermot, I hope you're right. Uh, thank you very much. My pleasure. Good to be back. And Integrity BC, thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. Mm -hmm.